What's up, everybody? It's Scott, aka Boutique PGA on Twitter um, from Fantasy Boutique here for another installment of Under Par. Um, took a little bit of a break last week with the uh, WGC Match Play event and the Corrales um, event down in the DR, but we are back this week. Um, if you're not familiar with Under Par, we've recapped the previous week's uh, tournament um, as well as talk about some of how our picks did. I'll uh, give you a course overview of this week's event, which is the Houston Open. And then I will give you my four by four picks, which are four golfers who will make up um, a part of my core group of golfers used for lineup construction on um, FanDuel and DraftKings. And I will also give you four um, value golfers whom I feel are flying under the radar, um, potentially have low ownership, um, good recent form, or whose game I just uh, think fits this week's event. So uh, head on over to uh, dfsboutique.com, um, sign up for our PGA package at $69.99, get you access uh, for the rest of the season, um, get you access into our members chat, course and tournament overview with historical whole-by-whole -whole breakdown, um, you know, current and course form data, our weekly PGA cheat sheet, um, DK and FanDuel cash and GPP rankings, um, our odds versus pricing model, and you also get a more in-depth look at my player pool with uh, write-ups. Um, so, as I said, there's not much really to talk about last week with the match play and the, and the Corrales Putacano event in the DR. Um, if you did play, I hope that you had a profitable week. I personally um, chose to avoid the entire slate. I uh, wanted nothing to do with the match play for obvious reasons. We've seen some big names like Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, Jordan Spieth, Hideki, um, Rory, or Rory McIlroy, a couple other um, big game, big name guys didn't even um, advance out of the, the pool play stage of, of the event. Um, instead, you're seeing guys like Siwoo Kim and Kyle Stanley, Ian Poulter, uh, Chucky Three Sticks, all advanced. Um, we did end up seeing Bubba Watson um, win the sec his second event of the year, beating Kevin Kisner pretty convincingly in the final uh, in the final seven and six. Um, and then we seen Alex Noren beat Justin Thomas in a third place match five and three, which was actually probably you know two guys that you probably would have expected to make it as far as they did. Um, in the Corrales event in the DR was pretty uneventful. Um, Bryce Garnett led wire to wire, beat Keith Mitchell by four strokes at 18 under. Um, so Bryce Garnett gets the perks of winning a tour event. So he gets two years exemption um, on tour and he gets entry into, you know, some big, uh, some bigger fields like the PGA Championship, the Players Championship and next year's Tournament of Championship, Tournament of Champions in Hawaii. So, but we're less than two weeks away um, from the most anticipated golf tournament of the year, um, the Masters, which is has the potential to be an epic tournament. You got Phil Mickelson in great form, Tiger's back to being, being and playing like Tiger. Justin Rose is probably one of the hottest golfers um, in the last three to four months. Bubba Watson has two wins this year. He's a previous winner at Augusta. Jordan Spieth always in contention at Augusta. Sergio is back to defend his title. And Dustin Johnson just seems to be flying under the radar, kind of. Uh, but before we get to talking too much about Augusta, the Green Jacket, Magnolia Lane, and some of the other traditions at the Masters, we have a tournament this week. Um, this week, the tour heads to the Golf Club of Houston for the sponsorless Houston Open. So maybe our buddy uh, TTR can get in touch with some big companies down in the Houston area and line up a sponsor for next year. Um, there's a handful of golfers that are going to use this week's Houston Open tournament as prep, prep for next week's Masters. Um, you know, the... One good or the one nice thing about the 
uh, Houston Open at the Golf Club in Houston is that the tournament directors, the, um, the superintendents and, and such at the course do a pretty good job of trying to replicate the conditions that, they're, that the golfers will see next week um, at Augusta. Um, so, the, you know, the course is... Is pretty. Both courses are pretty wide open. There's really no penalty um, for going, you know, off the fairway. Uh, the the rough is actually mowed from the green to the tee box, so that the golfers are going to be hitting into the green on their approach shots. Um, the areas around the green are closely mown and create a bunch of runoffs. Um, and lastly, you know, if the weather permits, you're going to see um, firm and fast greens, which is something that Augusta is, you know, pretty notorious for. Um, but, you know, no course is ever going to be able to replicate the beauty and, and the the majestic feeling of, of Augusta. It, it almost kind of looks on TV and, you know, from pictures that you've seen that, you know, if you were to, to die and, you know, there is a, a golf course in, you know, some other land or in heaven or whatever, this is probably what Augusta or, or it's probably what Augusta looks like. But uh, Houston does one hell of a job of trying to, to get um, the, the, you know, the golfers ready for, for next week. And in and, and doing that, it actually draws some uh, pretty – a pretty great big name uh, field of golfers to come to Houston. Um, the Golf Club of Houston is a par 72 course. It plays 7,441 yards. Um, the course is very long. Um, you know, early weather forecast, um, there's potential, not, not potential, but there's thunderstorms that are bearing down um, this afternoon on the Houston area. Um, some of those thunderstorms are, have the potential to be pretty severe. So any type of rain that we do get or they do get in Houston, it, the course is going to play even longer than 7,400 yards. Um, it's thus lending itself to the long hitters as you're not going to get much run, run or roll on the fairways. Um, the rain's going to soften the greens, which, you know, in the approach shots, you're going to be able to hold the greens. Um, we can pretty much forget about accuracy this week. As I mentioned, um, the rough is pretty much non-existent. They... Um, cut it to, you know, like an inch or two. So there's really no trouble for getting off the fairway. Um, ten holes on the course do have water, but um, the fairways are pretty wide and easy to hit. So you just avoid the water and, you know, you should be able to take take advantage of your length and set you up for success. Um, the greens are easy to hit by tour standards. Um, roughly 70% average for the field um, and greens are regulation percentage. So that comes out to like 12 and a half, 13 greens um, <clears throat> over the course of a, an entire round, which is probably uh, maybe one to two more greens in light regulation than an average field will see. Um, the greens are large, 6,950 square feet. Um, as I mentioned, they're pretty fast, usually running between 12 and 13 on the stint meter. The greens themselves are Bermuda, but they're heavily overseeded with bent rye mixed to kind of replicate the greens at, at Augusta. So with that in mind, you can rely um, less on the Bermuda putting statistics as these greens don't really putt like true Bermudas. Um, you know, as I mentioned, play, pay close attention to the weather this week, um, the storms today. Um, tomorrow and, and Friday don't look to be uh, too much of an issue. There's, you know, uh, small small winds being forecast between 5 and 10 miles an hour. Uh, winds are expected to pick up over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. They're calling for gusts of 10 to 20 miles an hour. Um, the winning scores typically average 16 under par, um, but if, you know, you know, conditions present themselves, you can get um, higher scoring. We've seen Russell Henley, Russell Henley last year Phil Mickelson back in 2011, um, both went at 10 under. And then on the flip side, in 2009, we've seen Paul Casey win at, win at 11 under. So pretty much expect scores to be in the, the mid-teens. The mid 
Um, the cut line probably fall anywhere between even and two under. Um, key stats I'm looking for this week, obviously driving distance is places a, a bomber's paradise. You can pretty much grip it and rip it. So you don't really have to rely on um, some of the accuracy stats, the driving accuracy, good drive percentage, or ball striking um, this week. As always, um, we here at Fantasy Boutique, um, we tend to rely on strokes gain, key to green, strokes gain, putting, birdie or better percentage, and bogey, bogey avoidance each week. Um, with the course being a par 72 course, par 5 scoring, or birdie and better percentage is important, but unlike most par 72 courses, uh, the par 5s here don't lend for a bunch of eagle chances. There's only been, um, on average, about 14 per year. Um, but all five par, all five or all four of the par fives play under par, um, which is more than likely typically typically the case um, in most court, most par seventy two courses, just because the length of these hitters, um, these golfers have nowadays, it's pretty easy to reach most par fives um, with second shots, which lends to you know eagle and birdie chances. Um, I'm also going to factor in par four scoring and birdie or better percentage um, just because there isn't, um, you know, a huge prevalence um, in scoring for the par fives or the par five scorings isn't like leaps and bounds above the par fours. Um, the par fours account for roughly 40, 47 to 50 percent of all the birdies on the course. Um, the par four distances range from a short 338 par four to uh, a couple longer ones in the 480 range. So if you're looking to get more in depth, you can look into the par four efficiency range between 450 and 500 yards. Um, approach shots between 150 and 175 out to 200 yards. We're going to see probably 50% of all your approach shots on the, on the uh, course this week between, you know, 150 to 200 plus yards. So just to recap, driving distance, strokes gain tee to green, strokes gains off the tee, strokes gain putting, um, par five, birdie or better in scoring, birdie or better in bogey avoidance are the important ones. And then you can look at some secondary like uh, proximity between 150 and 175, 200 plus, and then par four scoring and birdie or better, and then the efficiency between 450 and 500 yards. Um, so we'll get into the golfers. Once again, these the first four are golfers that are going to make up my core group for line of construction on DK and FanDuel. So the first golfer is Phil Mickelson. He's 12400 on FanDuel, 10200 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament, 11 to 1. <laughs> um, lefty's coming into, the, into Houston. Um, another course that he, you know, seems to really love. Um, in really good form. One thing that you take note about Phil is that um, he tends to play the week before every major just to get just to get a tune up. Um, he's made nine of ten cuts here, dating back to 2008, including the last eight straight. Um, in those eight straight um, cuts, he's had six top 20 finishes, uh, four top 20 finishes in his last four real life events. Um, cause I, you know, don't really consider last week an event, um, including his win at the WGC Mexico. Anytime Phil can, you know, go to a course and hit driver without any real concern for, you know, going off the fairway is very much in play. Um, and this doesn't go for just Phil Mickelson. Anytime, um, these golfers that are playing in the majors use these tournaments as a, as a tune-up, um, I'm always there's always a little bit of a, of, of a fear on my end just because um, they're using these tournaments as a tune-up, so they're going to be working on shots that they could potentially face next week, or you know, fine-tuning different things in their swing. Um, you know, so there's a chance that you know that they could really not not care less, but. Um, they're using it just as a tune-up instead of trying to go out there and win. Um, he's a slight bargain on DraftKings where he has a plus-two rating in our odds versus pricing model. Stats for Phil, he's first in the 
in the field. Shirk's game potting is first in proximity between 150 and 175 yards. First in birdie or better percentage. He's second in par four birdie or better, better percentage. And the list goes on and on. He ranks top 10 in, you know, par five scoring. Um, the efficiency for par four, par four scoring, par five birdie or better, strokes gain, tee to green. Um, you know, he's in a really good play this week. Um, he's probably going to be very chalky. Um, you know, if you can fit him into a cash game, um, go ahead. He's probably going to garner a, a shit ton of ownership in cash games. But uh, I really like Phil this week. Second golfer, Tony Finau. He's 11,300 on FanDuel. 9,000 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament 30 to 1. Um, Finau is pretty much the top dog when it comes to driving distance on tour. Um, he ranks number one in the field and number one in on tour in driving distance um, this year, averaging over 320 yards per drive. Um, the rest of his game has the potential to be just as good as his driving distance. Um, it's just a matter of if he can put everything together for, for that weekend. Um, he comes in with spotty form. He's missed two cuts in his last six events, but he has a, has, has a second-place finish um, at the Genesis Open, um, a very tough course, a very tough field um, in, in February. He finished 34th here last year and 42nd. In 2015, bookending a, mix, a missed cut um, in 2016. Again, he's another slight bargain with a plus four rating on DraftKings odds for, in our odds versus pricing model. Um, stats for Tony, he's first in the field, driving distance, third, strokes gained tee to green, eighth, birdie or better percentage, 10th, par five scoring, 13th, par five, uh, birdie or better percentage. And then he also ranks in the top 20 in proximity between 150 and 175 yards, strokes gained off the tee, um, and par four scoring. Um, the third golfer is Luke List. He's 9,900 on FanDuel. He's 9,600 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament, 30 to 1. Um, I mentioned two weeks ago at the Arnold Palmer that Luke was in my core play there. Um, there's no sign of List cooling down. I'm going to continue to ride him in my core groups again this week and probably in uh, subsequent weeks following. Um, He's the perfect, he has the perfect mix of, of current and course form. Um, and then you add in his distance and his scoring ability, which is why I really, really, really like uh, Luke List this week. Um, he finished third here last year in 27th in 2016, so he's kind of trending in the right direction there. He struggled last week in the match play, but I could, like I said, I could really give two craps about that. Um, but before that, he had finished as a 7th, 16th, Second, 26, 26, and 12th in his last six tournaments um, before going to Austin. Um, he's a better play on FanDuel where he's a plus nine rating, um, but I'm still going to roster him on both sides. I really don't care. Um, stats for list, he's second in the field driving distance, third in strokes gained off the tee, fourth in strokes gained tee to green, fifth in birdie or better percentage, eighth in par five birdie or better percentage, He's 15th in the par four efficiency between 450 and 500. And then he's 18th in par four scoring, 19th in bogey avoidance, and 21st in par five scoring. Um, the last golfer in my core group is Thomas Peters. He's 10,100 on FanDuel. He's 9,400 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament, 50 to 1. Um, I wasn't really looking into the Belgian bomber this week, um, but the more I kind of looked at the numbers – um, I kind of see myself gravitate um, gravitate towards him more and more. Um, he's making his first appearance here in Houston, but um, I could see some people being possibly scared off by scared off of him on the fan on FanDuel with the ten thousand one hundred price. It kind of puts him, you know, in that second tier just below the elite golfers. Um, on on DraftKings though, I expect to see him uh, ownership. You know, slightly higher because he has that bombers label. Um, he's you know a, a little bit. Uh, actually, I think his price is seventy five hundred on, or seventy four or seventy five hundred on DraftKings. I don't know why I said seventy or ninety, whatever. But anyway, um, at that price on DraftKings, there is some other interesting plays in that range. So 
Um, you know, I could possibly see the ownership being higher, but I could also see it, you know, you know, leveling itself out just because there's other plays there like Ches Revy and, you know, some other guys. Um, he didn't advance out of the pool play at the match play. Um, he played pretty poorly at the WGC Mexico, but he posted a 13th place finish at the Honda in, at Honda Classic in February, which was a really, really, really tough event. Um, he's the definite doom, uh, boomer bust type of play. Um, you know, if he gets hot, he can score with with the best of them. Um, for the uh, stats for Peters for the field, he's 17th in the field driving distance. Um, like I said, he's has pretty uh, spotty form, so he's really not you know ranked in the top 25 in the field based off of his tour stats for any other um, statistic. As for my value plays, once again, guys that um, I feel are flying under the radar, um, have good course or current form, or you know whose game I just feel fits this course. First one is James Hahn. He's 9,100 on FanDuel. He's 7,100 on DraftKings. Odds to win a tournament at 80 to 1. Now Hahn's course form really doesn't jump off the page at you or jump off the stat sheet at you, um, but his current form is pretty decent. Um, he's made 11 straight cuts uh, in the 2018 season. He had a stretch in February where, where he went T11, T26, and T14. Um, he had a second-place finish at the Sony Open back in January. Um, he's got four career appearances here at Houston. He's um, with a missed cut, but he has no, uh, no finish better than 36th. Um, he had a 49th, 36th, and a 56th. He's got a, third, a plus 31 rating on DraftKings in our odds versus pricing model, so I really, really, really like him on DraftKings, especially at the 7,100 price uh, point. Um, stats for Han, he's 7th in the field, par 5 birdie or better percentage, 10th in birdie or better percentage, 14th in strokes gained tee to green, he's 16th in the efficiency um, between 450 and 500, he's 17th in par 4 scoring, 20th in par 5 scoring, and then he's 25th in proximity from 200 plus yards out and bogey avoidance. Second golfer in the value is Kelly Kraft. He's 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament 80 to one. Um, something really clicked with Kraft um, since four straight missed cuts to start the 2018 season. Um, you know, it all started with the 63rd place finish the Genesis. And then he followed up with the eighth place finish at the Honda. Um, he finished 31st at Valspar, and then he finished third last week um, at Corrales. Um, he really never got into contention. I mean, the third place is obviously a high finish, but he never really contended for the win. But third place is still a third place, and he got a nice pay, uh, payday out of it. Uh, I'm going to ride that low uh, price on both sites um, and hope that he exceeds value. Um, you know, it's probably potential that he might be the lowest priced guy in your lineup. So potential of making the cut and finishing top 25 um, and getting those um, finishing points uh, is going to be key. Um, he only has two career appearances at Houston. He's got a missed cut in 2017 and a 50th place finish in 2013. He's got a plus 26 rating on FanDuel and a plus four rating on DraftKings and our odds versus pricing. Stats for Kraft, he is 17th in par 4 efficiency between 450 and 500 yards. He is 20th in strokes gained putting, and he is 20th in the proximity between 150 and 175 yards. The third golfer is Aaron Wise. He's 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DraftKings. Odds to win a tournament, 125 to 1. Um... As the you know the 2000 season is starting to unwind, it's been proven that Aaron Wise is a scorer, um, as he ranks inside the top 25 in pretty much all scoring categories. You know, from par four birdie or better to par five scoring and whatnot. Um, the rookie Oregon Duck has made eight of 13 cuts on the year, and then half of those eight made cuts have resulted in top 25 finishes. So let's hope that. He can duplicate that this week and exceed value for being such a low-priced golfer. Um, he's a much better play on FanDuel, where he has a positive rating in our odds versus pricing model. Um, and he has a huge 
negative 16 rating on DraftKings, so he's a little bit overpriced on that on that site. Um, stats for Wise, he is fifth in the field, par five, birdie or better percentage, or per fifth in par four, birdie or better percentage. Excuse me. Um, he's 11th in birdie or better percentage. He's 19th in par five, birdie or better percentage. Um, 21st in driving distance, and he's 24th in the field, par four efficiency, between 450 and 500 yards. Um, the last golfer is Matt Jones. <clears throat> he is 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament at 175 to 1. Um, let me check something real quick here. Yeah, 7,300. I don't know why I thought that he was priced a little bit higher than that. But um, this is a pure punt play this week. Um, you know, the stats and the models both seem to like him this week that I've that I've run. Um, he did win here um, in 2014, so it's tough to get a gauge on his ownership. Um, you know, based off of his recent form, you could expect him to to have a lower ownership, but that win, you know, people might just look and see that, oh, he's won here before, so let me plug him in, his lineup, in a lineup. So it's tough to, to judge. I don't think it's going to be anything crazy high. Um, you know, I would expect it's sub 5%, but – is it possible he creeps just a little bit uh, above that? Um, you know, he has, with the win, um, 2014, he has the, the potential to pay off huge at his price point. Um, he's only made four of nine cuts on the year, um, but one of those cuts was a T28 last week at Corrales. Um, not sure how much stock he put into it. It was a... Uh, a uh, pretty weak field, a bunch of, you know, former web.com guys and a bunch of, you know, subpar, or not subpar, but, um, you know, below average tour standard golfers. Um, if you look at it, when you look at his course form, it's not much better than the current form. Um, he's missed the cuts, cut here four of seven times. Um, the made finishes other than the win, he's got a 49th last year and a 38th in 2013. Um, he's a better play on FanDuel than DraftKings. Stats for Jones. He's seventh in the field, par four efficiency between 450 and 500 yards. He's eighth in proximity, 150 to 175 yards. He's 13th in driving distance, 14th in strokes gained off the tee. He's 19th in par four, birdie or better percentage. 22nd in birdie or better percentage, and he's 24th in par five, birdie or better percentage. Uh, so once again, my core group of golfers are Phil Mickelson, Tony Finau, Luke List, and Thomas Peters. My value targets are James Hahn, Kelly Craft, Aaron Wise, and Matt Jones. Um, once again, if you like and see what you hear here, uh, like and see what you um, have seen on this video, head over to dfsboutique.com. Sign up for our PGA package. Once again, it's $69.99. We also offer um, some packages for other sports, NASCAR, um, same price. Um, we have a MMA package that's rolling out. Um, MLB is starting either today or tomorrow. Um, you know, NBA, um, NFL, you know, NHL, you name it, we cover it. Um, so once again, head over to dfsbudique.com, get signed up. Um, give me a follow on Twitter, Boutique PGA. Give Fantasy Boutique a follow at DFS Boutique. Um, Fantasy Boutique, we tailor your game like a winner. Daily, daily fantasy sports designed by winners. Um, feel free to, you know, give this video a like, share it. Um, do whatever we need to do to get the, the DFS Boutique name out, the Fantasy Boutique name out. Um, I let, thank you guys once again for watching. We'll be back next week for the first major of the year, the Masters. Um, until then, I will see you later.